What's new? Okay, new. Um, we had a request for a right angle USB extender. Uh, that's what this is. It, it you know it attaches to a. Um, actually, can you go back one? Okay. Um, these two ears attach to an enclosure. You you drill or cut a rectangular hole, and then um, the cable comes out right angle wise, and then on the other end, a matching USB Type A. Uh, pretty simple. Has just passes everything through. Um, good for many uses. I think it's about 30 centimeters long. Um, we also have a straight through version, not right angle style. Okay. Next up, we have three different lengths of 22 pin, 0.5 millimeter pitch AB flex cables. Um, you can use it with the Raspberry Pi 5. We're also going to be using and selling these for use with the, um, Raspberry Pi RP2350 boards that we have with an HSTX connector because it's 22 pins. Um, but the Raspberry Pi 5 uses this cable for DSI and CSI, so it can also be used for that. It's good for kind of any kind of um, high speed signal. Uh, I think I have 5, 10, and 20 centimeters long. Next up. Next up, we also have a request for SMT SD cards in larger sizes. We've already stopped the 512 megabyte now we have two and four gigabyte versions um just you know a slightly variant chip it's a 16 gigabit or 32 gigabit basically this acts like a you know micro sd card but it's vibration proof um the only thing is of course you can't plug this into usb so it's good if you have a device like circuit python or arduino with tv usb where you're having it act like a mass storage device or where you're okay with it not being physically removable and plugging in plug a bolt into um, a USB dongle or card reader. I still, there's some cases where it's useful, especially like I said, I've heard of people who are like, hey, I have a rocket project or a robot project and I don't want there to be any risk of the SD card popping loose or shaking loose from the connector. Um, this would be, you know, hard mounted in. That's cool. So on the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our customers, our community, our team at Adafruit who make things go is the Feather powered by the Raspberry Pi 2350. Lady Ada. Yeah. It's here. It's here. Um, we just had to iron out last bugs. We've got the chips. We've got uh, everything running. We put in our first 100 boards. We're going to get more made. Um, got more PCBs on orders. Wanted to make sure there was nothing wrong with the first 100. But you can pick them up in the shop if you're watching this live. If you're not watching it live, it still might be in stock. Who knows? Um, so it's got the RP2350. It's a dual core ARM or RISC-V core running at 150 megahertz. Because it's an M33 and it's got a floating point unit, it's about twice as fast as the RP2040, um, at least when we've been running circuit Python code. It's kind of what we've observed. For RAM, it's got twice as much RAM, about 520K instead of 260K. There's also 8K of one time programmable um, memory, like for uh, configuration or crypto keys or whatnot. It's also got Trust Zone for secure boot, something that the RP2040 didn't have, people asked for. Um, apparently it's got better low power support, um, low power sleep state uh, power usage, but that's still under development. Um, so I don't know if there's a software available for testing it yet. Um, like I said, twice as much RAM, optional PS RAM. So if you look at the top of the board, no. um, in addition to the QSPY flash memory, we put eight megs on there. There's also an eight SOIC spot for soldering on PS RAM. Um, if you'd like, PS RAM is usually available two or eight megabytes. Um, it's a little, you know, expensive, so we didn't offer it by default, but if there's projects, can you refresh? Should be. Oh, maybe they're... They're already gone. They're already gone? Hold on. Could be. Sorry, a little live check right now. Well, I can't actually... Yeah, I'll tell you what. Um, we're going to uh, play a couple of videos in the top secret section. Yeah. And we're going to check. We may have sold out. I, I really checked. It said... We may have sold out. Let me out. check. Maybe I, maybe I didn't uncheck something. Oh, but uh, why don't we do it during the top secret section? Did you do top secret? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so okay. keep going. Yeah. Okay. Um, it'll, be, it'll be in the store in like two minutes. Or we sold out. Or we sold out. Um, I also have a debug port uh, that got the request for that. Thankfully, uh, the, since the RP2350 has come out, there's now the Pico Probe connector. 
which is uh, JST3 SH. You can use it with the Pico Pro board that they sell. It's still got the battery charging and you can run off a battery and it charges over USB-C. You can now cut a jumper on the back if you want to disable um, the charging. So some people ask like, oh, I want to run it off of a non-rechargeable battery. You can disable charging um, and then USB-C for bootloading and code. And uh, can run Arduino. There's now Arduino, Arduino support, CircuitPython support, MicroPython support, Pico SDK. And the last cool thing is the HSTX connector on the end. So there's a new peripheral on the RP2350 that allows it to drive DVI displays without using PIO or overclocking. Um, so we made a little connector that brings out all of those cool. uh, high-speed transmission um, plus I squared C. And we'll have some add-on boards that let you do uh, DVI output. Okay, that's new products. And then um, uh, I'm going to bounce out for a second. Then.